This is Raw, a podcast by Greta Pools. Series two is The Nature Cure. The poet Pablo Neruda once wrote, Peace goes into the making of a poem as flour goes into the making of bread. But in Perth, in 1939, nutritionist Alice Capone was at war with the bread board of Western Australia over how to mill the flour for her bread. This episode is based on a published transcript of Alice's speech to the Perth Town Hall public meeting to protest the board's decision to refuse her a licence to sell her wholemeal linseed loaf. The newspapers of the time branded it an indignation meeting. Just a note, in the following narration of Alice's speech, she refers to the nature cure theories about diet and health that she learnt in America as modern health science. Here's Deb Foster, back to narrate part two of this double episode on Alice Capone. It is the evening of June 7th, 1939. A crowd has assembled in Perth's Town Hall to attend a mass meeting organised by 70-year-old naturopath Alice Capone. She is protesting the Western Australian Bread Board's refusal to provide her a licence to sell her own brand Radiant Health wholemeal bread. The newspapers of the day branded the strong-minded and business-savvy Alice a diet crank and purveyor of American hooey due to her criticism of drinking dairy milk and her declaration that the state's bread was inferior to her linseed loaf. Alice published a transcript of her town hall speech in her Healthy Living magazine in 1939. She prefaces the speech with a short description of topics discussed in which Alice Capone, under siege personally and professionally for her application to sell her own 100% wholemeal loaves under the threat of a good old-fashioned slapping from the self-appointed representative from the dairy farmers, gathered her followers and interested passers-by for a talk on civil rights, healthy lifestyle actions and the value of a sexless, platonic friendship between the sexes. Anglo-Saxon law is based upon the Ten Commandments and the Divine Beatitudes. The Seventh Commandment is, Thou shalt not commit adultery. Tonight, we can read into that commandment a meaning far wider, deeper, broader and higher than the ecclesiastical interpretation. Mother Nature has given us a perfect hole in the cultivated berry of wheat. Even the master Christian and his followers plucked ears from the cornfield through which they walked, rubbed the grain free and blew out the chaff and ate the berries of wheat just as they were, that is, in the unadulterated state. The adulteration of much of the people's manufactured food supply has reached the dizzy limit in this country, and as a consequence, Australians are fast dying out as a race. The Eighth Commandment is, Thou shalt not steal. We want that divine principle to pertain in the manufacture of the Radiant Health bread. What have the roller flour mills been doing? They have been stealing the bran, the pollard and the germ to give to livestock. We want a scientific supervision other than the millers to ensure that they will not steal anything out of our flour. Thou shalt not steal anything from the perfect whole berry. Never in the history of this state has the public had access to a loaf of unadulterated, 100% wholemeal bread until, through my instrumentality, the Radiant Health bread came on the market. For the last 12 months, I have been scientifically supervising at the mills, which manufactured the Radiant Health flour and the bakers who make the Radiant Health bread. After this 12 months of faithful effort to arouse the people to the importance of eating unadulterated wholemeal bread, after perfecting the Radiant Health Bread Organisation and succeeding in making it as nearly foolproof as well as rogue-proof as any human innovation could be, the entire structure has been swept away. The people are again struggling in the ocean of commercial interests at the mercy of the Western Australian Millers Combine and the Master Bakers Association. It is again a free for all and the devil take the hindmost in the bread. With a little stretch of the imagination, we can make the Seventh and Eighth Commandments fit very nicely into the very matter we are here tonight to defend. 
the natural or biological law says, thou shalt not eat adulterated bread. There is a reward for obedience to the spiritual and natural laws and a penalty for disobedience. Thou shalt eat unadulterated, 100% wholemeal bread and be rewarded by robust, rugged, reliable, radiant health. And conversely, if you eat adulterated bread, you will get all kinds of diseases. The science of human nutrition is based upon laws which are as demonstrable as the science of numbers or the science of harmony or the science of engineering or any other science. The government health authorities cannot be very modern. The government, therefore, cannot be relied upon to institute any radical changes in regard to the people's manufactured foods. There is no alternative. The people must look after their own health and see to it that they purchase only those foods which are scientifically supervised. Nor do the people themselves begrudge the extra expense which scientific supervision means. Would it be just and would it be merciful to have me give my valuable services and the enormous amount of medical health education I have given to hundreds of people in Western Australia and have no return? I am sure the people who have benefited from my work gladly pay the price for it. The White House in Washington, USA, is the home of presidents. There is a beautiful chaste dome, a sunburst in the main hall. Around this, in black marble letters, is the following text. What does the Lord require of thee, O man, but to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God? Has the Government Bread Price Fixing Commission dealt justly in cutting away the very foundation upon which the radiant health bread rests? Do justly. Is it merciful for the government to come into my affairs and deprive me of my source of supply for performing the office of supervision? Is it merciful to deprive the only woman who has had the vision, the courage and the scientific knowledge of her fairly earned royalties? The mysterious forces of nature with which the modern health science practitioner surrounds themselves with are the nerves of God the divine creative principle by which man contacts and is linked up with the great over-soul, in the same way that the various body parts through the sympathetic nervous system are linked up with the great dynamo, the brain. Furthermore, man is, as it were, a tree whose roots are in the atmosphere. Therefore, he may inhale life in a threefold sense. The brain of man is likened to a radio-receive instrument. If we are desirous of contacting more stations, to wit, the higher, wider atmosphere of thought, the cosmic forces, the fourth dimensional world, we must have a perfect receiving instrument, or we will not get a satisfactory connection. Man is a self-charging dynamo. Man changes himself daily, nay, hourly, with either destructive or constructive elements, according to his living, eating, and thinking habits. It is not the food one eats that is important. Elimination of waste end products of food metabolism, that is the factor of major importance. Man is, as it were, a tree whose roots are in the atmosphere. Therefore, he can breathe in life in threefold sense, body, mind, and soul. The atmosphere is the ocean of life. Breathing is the never-ending tide of life. The oxygen in the air we breathe is power. The lungs are the high-frequency apparatus of the human body. Be wise. Don't live to eat. Eat to live. Anger, resentment and melancholia sends destructive vibrations through the physical organism. Eat for radiant health and your disposition will improve. Modern health science is a dynamic power for developing a holier race as well as a healthier one. Whole, holy, being the all. Whole, meaning health in body, mind and soul. A perfect mind is a healthy body. That is the thing. The body is the instrument of the mind. A sick body is not an efficient receiving instrument for the higher thought processes. Stored up waste matter from highly stimulating foods, such as animal proteins, 
devitalized white flour and denatured white sugar condiments and alcoholic drinks are the primary cause of loose morals. The 100% healthy man or woman is not interested in sex life, except for procreative purposes. This does not mean that there is a watertight compartment in which the sexes are segregated in modern health science. Platonic friendship between the sexes is only possible in modern health science. A woman is as old as she looks, and a man isn't old till he stops looking. The body to be strong must be made to resist. Walking in the dewy grass strengthens the feet and electrifies the body. You may have wondered how we got from wholemeal bread to sex. Perhaps these were dot points and she ran out of space in the magazine to print the full text of her speech. Sex was a popular topic of Alice's. She wrote a book on it. And earthing, or walking barefoot on the grass or dirt, was part of the nature cure tradition that Alice inherited from Benedict Lust. It's interesting coming back to Alice Capone's writing after a few years. I now see the theosophical influence on her. On the topic of religion, there was an interesting comment I heard about Mary Baker Eddy's Christian Science Church. Technocracy researcher Patrick Wood, speaking in 2020 on the James Delling poll Delling Pod about the Trilateral Commission, comments that members of the Trilateral Commission that he interacted with were followers of the Christian Science Church that Alice Caporn had fought so hard to save from moral corruption. Can I digress for one other story? Please. It's a little story. <laughs> if we have time. Go on. <clears throat> yeah. Back when I, I mentioned the interview I did with the executive director of the trial out of, with Larry King, I discovered something afterwards. I actually went and had breakfast with him early morning. I think it was a Denny's or something open in the building downstairs. And we talked. And I discovered that philosophically speaking, that he was a member of Christian science, which is kind of a mind uh, twisting religion that doesn't believe in evil. They don't believe evil exists. And if evil things happen to you, it's only because you're giving assent to it in your mind, you know, that somehow you believe it, it gets you. I never quite understood it, but it's a little bit nutsy. And I've seen this philosophy, not that all trial commission members are Christian scientists, there weren't, but I just say that. I've, I ran across this philosophy many times with them directly, where you'll say something to them that would criticize what they're doing. Well, I, I don't like this policy, X, whatever it is. This policy, this is Y. And they look at you and say, wow, how can you think that way? It's like blank stare. How could you possibly come up with some other, you know, that what we're doing is just so good and we're doing it for you. It's a very interesting insight. And when the federal government in Australia started enforcing vaccination to some community sectors back in 2015, Christian scientists were the only group able to object to vaccinations on religious grounds. The former Australian Prime Minister, Scott Morrison, who was Social Services Minister at the time, was quoted in The Guardian as follows. Social Services Minister Scott Morrison earlier this week announced that the government would cut off childcare payments and family tax benefits to parents who did not immunise their children. He noted that there was one group who had previously registered their objections to vaccinations, but he refused to say who they were. There is only one religion, it's a very small religion, that has such a registered objection and I'm not about to publicise it because I'm sure they want to protect the integrity of their exemption and not have others abuse it, Morrison told 3AW on Monday. But the Family Assistance Guide, published by the Social Services Department, says the exempt religion is the Church of Christ, scientists, otherwise known as Christian scientists. Parents and carers must produce a letter from the church leader stating that they are an active member of the organisation before they can be granted an official exemption. That was an extract from a 2015 article published in The Guardian Australia and accessed on 17th April 2023. This episode was written by me using extracts of Alice Capone's words from her books and other archives. Deb Foster is the narrator. 
You'll find more about Alice Capone at GretaPauls.com and in the show notes for this episode. Raw is a podcast by Greta Pools. Subscribe to Raw The Nature Cure where you get your podcasts or visit the website, all one word, rawthepodcast.com.